Okay, so let's take a look here. When you multiply two things with the same base, what do you do with their exponents? Add them. N plus M. Power to a power. Multiply. Dividing exponents. Subtract. Something to the zero power. Equals one. Ooh, how many of you got this one? Something to the negative power. What do you do to get rid of that negative? Good. One over eight at the end. So there's two things. You're going to put that term in the denominator. And you're going to make that exponent positive. So let's practice with those rules. Just trying to get used to working with neg working with rational exponents as opposed to uh, nice integer exponents that we're familiar with. And we'll start with problem number 78. 4 to the 2 fifths times 4 to the 2 fifths. Well, what's nice is that these two things have the same base. And there's something else that's nice about this one. Their fractions have the same denominator. So you get 4 to the 2 fifths plus 2 fifths. What does that relate to? What do I end up with? 4 to the 4 fifths, which looks kind of strange, but that's what you get. By the way, there's a huge temptation to do 4 times 4 is 16. Not true. Not in this case. You're going to add the exponents to solve this one. Let's continue with perhaps a little more challenging one. Eh, slightly more challenging. Let's see what we can come up with. Problem number 80. Five to the one third times five. Is that a negative five thirds? Five to the negative five thirds. So probably a couple ways we can work this one. I think the best way is to first take care of adding the exponents. What do I get when I add one third and negative five thirds? Negative four thirds. There's probably one last thing that I would ask of you in a problem like this, and that is to get rid of the negative exponent. So how can we do that? One over five to the four thirds power. Now notice what happened. All I did is I put that term in the denominator and made the exponent positive. You do not take the reciprocal of four thirds, for instance. There's nothing else that happens other than you just put that term in the denominator. Let's keep going with problem number 86. So 2 to the 5 6 power times 2 to the 1 3rd power over 2 to the 2 to the 1 half. <coughs> now let me kind of anticipate one of our needs in this problem and that is let's get common denominators for all these exponents first. Just out of convenience. What's a common denominator for all these 6? So 5 6 were already set. Instead of one third, how many six will I write? Two six, and then denominator three sixths. I would suggest that we multiply these together by adding the exponents first. So in the numerator, I'll get two to what power? Seven six over two to the three six. So I added exponents to get the term in the numerator. Now that I'm dividing, i got to subtract the exponents. 7, 6 minus 3, 6 gives me 2 to the 4, 6. I would ask that you simplify that, put it in the lowest terms. Instead of 4, 6, I should write 2 thirds.
please. Why didn't you multiply 2 times 2? Um, let me show you an example of why we don't multiply the bases with something other than a fractional exponent here. So suppose I have 2 to the 3rd times 2 to the 2nd. And let me offer you two different ways that we can do this. If I multiply things by adding their exponents, I get 2 to the 5th power, which is 32, right? But what if I multiplied this by multiplying the base and adding the exponents? Then I would get 4 to the 5th power, which is, um, I think, 1,024. Now, which way is right? Well, let's think of it this way. 2 cubed is 8. 2 squared is 4. 8 times 4 is 32. So I know it's really tempting to want to multiply these bases in addition to adding the exponents, but it's wrong. It doesn't work. Okay? Let's continue with problem number 88. b to the 4 fifths times b to the 4 fifths divided by b to the 3 fifths. You should be able to simplify this one pretty nicely. Okay, so b to the 8 fifths divided by b to the 3 fifths. When I subtract the numbers, subtract the exponents, I get b to the 5 fifths, but I really hope you didn't leave it as 5 fifths. What's that turn into? Yeah, b to the first power, or better yet, just b. Nice. Let's jump up to problem number 132. So negative of 25, s to the 4th, t to the 6th, raised to the negative 3 halves power. So this problem is playing at all my weaknesses because my s's look like 5's, my t's look like pluses. It's just a bad problem for Jeff all around. But let's see what we can do with it. The first thing I would suggest is that we get rid of the negative exponent here. Now, when I do that, I'm going to leave this negative in the form of a negative 1 in the numerator. I'm going to write 25 s to the 4th t to the 6th raised to the 3 halves power. Because this exponent only applies to this term. Then what? Now I've got something to a power raised to another power. If you think back to our rules, this exponent on the outside multiplies these exponents on the inside. Except there's something that's easy to forget when you're doing this problem. What's the exponent of 25? 1. You have to remember that as you're doing this problem. So, when I drop the parentheses, I get 25 to the 3 halves power. What's 3 halves times 4? Good. You can think of it this way, 3 halves times 4. The 2's cancel, 3 times 2 is 6. So I get 25 to the 3 halves. Uh, s to the 6th, how about 
T. What power of T will I have? 9. 2 cancels into 6 twice. Or, yeah, 2 cancels into 6 three times. 3 times 3 is 9. So we got 25 to the 3 halves power, S to the 6th, T to the 9th. Except when you look up your answer in the back of the solution manual, you'll be disappointed. You won't see 25. Instead, you'll see 125. S to the 6th, T to the 9th. And you might start getting frustrated. It's like, okay, well, it's time for us to understand what these fractional exponents mean. What does it mean to have something to the 3 halves power? I mean, that seems kind of strange. So let's work on uh, understanding that. Um, apart from this step, are we okay with problem 132 here? That would be the answer. We, the, the part that I haven't explained to you yet, Rhonda, is how you figure out what 25 to the 3 halves is. What does that mean? No, no, we haven't gone over that. And I want to I wanna kind of first hint at it, um, and then I'll tell you. So let me hint at what that is. And we can gain a little bit of insight this way. Suppose I take the square root of 5 and square it. Well, that would give me the square root of 5 times the square root of 5. Or I can bring things together as the square root of 25. What's the square root of 25? 5. And perhaps we could have done that right away. We could say, all right, well, when we square a square root, they cancel. They're what are called inverse operations. But what if I write 5 to the 1 half power and square that? By our rules with exponents, what we just finished doing, these multiply, right? So I'll get 5 to the first power, which is again 5. So somehow or another, the square root of 5 and 5 to the 1 half power are essentially the same thing. They're just two different ways to write it. It's like 6 and half a dozen. They mean the same thing. So 5 to the 1 half power equals the square root of 5. In fact, we can use this, and I use it all the time, on my calculator. For whatever reason, I find it too much work sometimes to find the square root key. I like using something to the 1 half power. If I raise 36 to the 0.5 power, that is 1 half, what do you think I'll get when I press the enter key? Six, because something to the one half power is just like a square root. Now, what we need to understand to kind of fill out our understanding of problem number one thirty-two is what happens in general. In general, a to the m over nth power. So this fractional exponent is the nth root of a to the m. And this is a little gem that you need to memorize. This part right here. That's, that's the key to understanding this whole section. So understanding that this fractional exponent really means the same thing as the nth root of a to the m. Now, I, I can see the kind of frustration in your faces. You're like, ah, oh, there's no way I'm going to remember this. I, I'm totally going to screw up where the M and the N go. But it's okay. They've done some uh, psychological research on students to figure out a good mnemonic device and they've come up with it. So it's a really well scientifically proven method as to how to memorize this. It's called the boot method. And the way it works is this. You're going to write A to the M over N power and being naturally aggressive to the subject of math you're going to draw a little boot, men's size 13, no high heels please, next to the denominator. And being aggressive to the subject of math, you're going to kick that denominator. And when you do, the n comes flying over here, the n, m falls down, and you get the nth root of a to the m. Ta-da! 
the move method. All right, I might have been exaggerating a little bit about the scientifically proven method, all right? <laughs> but one way or another, you have to remember how to go back and forth between these two. So, <laughs> all right. Some of you were like, really, you know, believe me for a second, I think. <laughs> Sorry. Um, well, let's, let's, <laughs> well, let's practice with uh, one or two of these and, and try and get used to this idea of of these fractional exponents. So for instance, problem number, I think 42 is the one I want here. Oh yeah, yeah, tell you what, let's do, let's do problem number 132. That's a, a great one. So let's go back to problem number 132. We had 125 to the 3 halves power. Oh, 25 to the 3 halves power? All right, there we go. 25 to the 3 halves power. Even better, because this will work out nice and even. So, if I wanted to rewrite that, let's draw a boot here, and it's going to kick that denominator over, right? So, I'll end up with the square root of 25 to the third power. And that's, that's equivalently what it is. Now, to evaluate this, I'd suggest we do this. We can do this one without a calculator. Absolutely without a calculator. Let's start, though, with the square root here. Let's ignore the cube for the moment. Let's start with the easy part. What's the square root of 25? 5. But I didn't cube this, right? So it's 5 cubed still. From the left-hand side board, what's 5 cubed? 125. Yay. Let's try it on our calculators now that we figured it out by hand. Ah. So take 25 raised to the 3 divided by 2 power. Now, if when you raise it, you get a little caret, if when you hit that key, it does this, you're going to have to type in a left parenthesis 3 divided by 2 and then a right parenthesis. Some of us, it just puts it nice and neatly in the exponent. And in this case, it should give you exactly 125. So, are you able to get 125 out of your calculators? Okay, cool. Let's try a few more here. Yes, because that's what... Uh, that's the only thing that I hadn't discussed here is 25 to the 3 halves power. So that 25 to the 3 halves became 125. How did you do that again on the calculator? Um, probably the safe way is to do 25, hit the exponent key, then a left parenthesis, 3 divided by 2, and then a right parenthesis. And that should get you 125. Got it? Okay, good. Let's try a couple more like that. Let's try problem number 42. Twenty-seven to the two thirds power. So if I want you to do two things. First of all, I want you to rewrite it using radicals. And then secondly, I want you to figure out what the value is. What number do you get? Now, if you get that one, then let me give you another one to work on while I walk around. Number 44 is negative 100 to the 3 halves power. Now, I'll give you a hint that negative is not part of the exponent. So if you wanted to, you could kind of think of it this way. The negative's on the outside, and you got 100 to the 3 halves on the inside. If you weren't careful with that, your calculator might give you the wrong answer there. So try and write that with radicals first, and then simplify it.
Okay, so for the first one, let's draw ourselves a little boot here. The three comes over, the two drops down. Start with the cube root. Start with the power of the radical here because that's going to make this a smaller number. Not that you can't get this off your calculator. I can encourage you to be able to do both. 3 squared is 9. Yay. Done. As far as the second one's concerned, the negative stays out in front. This becomes the square root of 100 cubed. Now you could do 100 cubed is a million take the square root of a million, but I think it's easier to do the square root first. Square root of 100, that's something we know. 10. So I get negative of 10 cubed. Now 10 cubed is 1,000. So it's just negative of 1,000. Yay. So, say again? Perfect. You should get negative 1,000 when you do that one. Let's try a couple more here, um, and I want to practice a little bit of this on our calculators. To make sure you can do these on your calculator. So let's try problem number uh, 20. 625 to the 1 quarter. See if you can't get this one off your calculator. And likewise, try problem number 26, negative 125 to the 1 -third power. So 625 raised to the 1 divided by 4 power should give you 5. Essentially what you're doing is you're finding the fourth root of 625, which is 5. So something to the 1 fourth power is like a fourth root. Something to the 1 third power is going to be like a cube root. And this time with problem number 26, you should have gotten a negative 5. It should not give you a decimal on that one. Um, what might be happening is that if you put it in with parentheses, eh, I don't know, um, depending on how you put it in, maybe you've got the reciprocal of what you should have ended up with. Um, but you shouldn't get a point two, for instance. Is that what you got? Oh my, wow. Uh, okay. <laughs> it's all right. Uh, let's keep going. So something to the one-half power was like a, a fourth root. Something to one-third power is like a cube root. What do you think something to the one-half power is going to be like? Something to the one half power is in number 34. What am I going to get here? Square root. So essentially, draw a little boot here. I get the square root of negative 16, q to the fourth, raised to the first power. Now, typically, we don't write the 2 out in front. It's just understood to be a square root. Do I need to write parentheses to the first power? No. What's the correct final answer here? Well done. Narn. This is not a real number. This is a little reminder 
of the stuff from the last section. It's just not a real number. Yes, ma'am. It, it depends on how it's written. Now, in number 26, the one-third only applies to this. If I had written it like this, negative 125 to the one-third, then, then this would be under the radical. It would be the cube root of negative 125. Um, now, by coincidence, you get the same thing. But, yeah, if, if it was an... Um, if it was an even number, then it'd be much different. Suppose in this one, I had, say, uh, negative 16 q to the fourth. Um, and let's see, this do it doesn't lend itself perfectly. Yeah. Um, let me try a different one. Suppose I had negative 16 to the one fourth and negative 16 to the 1 fourth. So in the one case, this would be on the outside of the radical. It would be the negative of the fourth root of 16, which would be negative 2. Over here, I'd have the fourth root of negative 16, which would be narn. So it certainly makes a big difference as to where you have, uh, where that exponent applies. Does it apply to just this number or the whole thing? And you could tell that with parentheses. Uh, I could have either one. I guess it depends on what, what I want you to find or what I want you to conclude. Okay. Let's take a break here. So I'll see you in 10 minutes.